Does our refugee program put Australians in danger? Now, I thought we would have, would have learned from the disastrous decision of Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser 40 years ago to ignore warnings from his immigration minister and immigration department to not bring in so many Muslim refugees from the Lebanese civil war. Now, he was warned. Many were unskilled, illiterate, that struggled to fit in. Makes sense. But Fraser wouldn't listen. It just seemed good. And we're still living with the consequences of that and of immigration from Lebanon since. For instance, we've now got gun crime in Western Sydney, Northern Melbourne, often involving people from Lebanese families. Just last month, for instance, Hamad Assad, known in Middle Eastern organised crime circles, was shot dead. He, in turn, was a suspect in the murder of another Lebanese-Australian crime figure, Walid Ahmed, in April. Bikie gangs, Nomad, Hells Angels, Bandidos, they've got a lot of Lebanese members, a hell of a lot, plus others from Middle Eastern backgrounds. You would have to say that with the infiltration of recent people um, in the Middle Eastern environment, all of a sudden we've got an escalation in our violence between the two clubs and the escalation of uh, the tensions. And now, of course, we have Islamist terrorists of Lebanese descent going over to fight for the Islamic State. More than half the 20 people jailed here for terrorism are from Lebanese families. Now, politicians do tell me privately they understand these dangers, importing refugees from cultures not that compatible with our own. The problem is that most don't dare say so publicly. It gets them branded racist. Ask Liberal MP Kevin Andrews, when he was the Immigration Minister a decade ago, he tried to warn us. He actually said bringing in so many refugees from Sudan and Somalia, the third world war zone, that was dangerous, they struggled to assimilate, and their crime rate was already too high. Now, for that, Andrews was vilified as a racist. The media, ethnic groups went for him. The age vilified him. And get this, Victoria's Chief Commissioner of Police even falsely claimed the crime rate for Sudanese immigrants was not higher than normal, and Labor's spokesman ran with that untruth to attack Andrews too said, Andrews, disgrace, crime rate, no problem. Well, again, we now live with the consequences. Yes, many African refugees do well here. Try hard. One just got named New South Wales Australian of the Year. But Melbourne in particular has seen an incredible crime wave from this tiny community. Just in the last three weeks, there's been a series of arrests and crimes involving people of African appearance. There's been a car chase on the Westgate Bridge, an arrest of suspects over several armed robberies. There's been a robbery uh, and smashing up of a Turak jewellery shop. African gangs, a couple of weeks ago, robbed four office work stores. And last week, homes in Melton were burgled and other Africans tried a carjacking Laverton, this time unsuccessful. And that's just... I haven't even listed them all. Who let them in? Who let them in? And is it fair for our refugee program to be putting Australians once more in this danger?